This is Campus Lore Live, where NFL players are the experts on college football. I'm your host, Drew Butler, joined alongside Aaron Murray. And on this week's episode, we're going to be joined by Justice Hill, former Oklahoma State Cowboy and current running back for the Baltimore Ravens. Aaron, it's Bedlam, Oklahoma State versus Oklahoma this weekend. We'll talk to Justice about that matchup and everything else going on in the Big 12. But let's jump right into it, man. The biggest game from last weekend was actually in the Big 10. The 13th ranked Wisconsin Badgers come out of pro COVID protocol. Excuse me. They took two weeks off. They went to the big house to take on Michigan. Seemed like a must win for Michigan. That wasn't necessarily the case. Wisconsin wins 49 to 11. Big time problems in Ann Arbor, but also, Aaron, a lot of optimism in Camp Randall for the Wisconsin Badgers. The biggest thing to me was for Michigan and and, and also with, with Wisconsin was how they were able to run the football through 141 yards on the road. I mean, they just said, listen, we're going to manhandle you. And if you're Michigan, you just have to be so disappointed in the way you lost that football game. You just got smacked right in the mouth. Your offense struggled. Your defense struggled. And to me, you look at this team under Jim Harbaugh, uh, and it's just been – it has been great. They haven't won the big games. They haven't beat their rivals. They haven't played well against ranked opponents, especially top 10 opponents. And, and I just think it's time to move on and make a change. It seems like any type of situation where Michigan can take that step forward or if they're in a must-win situation with their back up against the wall, they don't come through. You heard Fowler and Herbstreet during the broadcast breaking down – what is the issue with Michigan? These guys look disinterested. They are not playing to their full capability. That is clear, and it starts from the top down. So it is going to get ugly in Ann Arbor, but let's go back to Camp Randall. Look, they're, they're 2-0, and and the Big Ten as a whole right now is looking pretty decent. Do you think the Badgers has what it takes to maybe upset Ohio State, win the Big Ten, and make it to the college football playoff this year? Well, the way they're playing right now, yes. I mean, they've only played a couple games, so I think they got to get a few more on the resume before we start saying, hey, they're good enough to play in the playoffs. They're good enough to beat Ohio State. I just think Ohio State is in a different class. Those guys are elite. A lot has to do with, obviously, their quarterback, Justin Fields. So, yes, I think if there is a team right now to knock out Ohio State, I think the best chance would be Wisconsin based on what we've seen from the quarterback play, based on what we've seen from the defense. But I just think it's too early on right now to to for sure say that. The good thing is we don't have to make that decision to the end of the year because they don't play in the regular season. Um, and Ohio State does have some big games coming up, obviously, this weekend. We'll break that one down later. So they have some more games to prove to, to the country as well that, hey, we are an elite program and we deserve to be in the playoffs, even with a limited schedule and what the Big Ten is playing in right now. Certainly. I mean, we're only a couple weeks in. So with the good teams, you want to wait and see what's going to happen. But with the bad teams, I mean, it's clear at this point. And there are some pretty bad teams out there with historical program histories. And Aaron, let's just break it down right now. There are some very disappointing teams across college football. Tell me, who's your most disappointing team through 11 weeks of the season? Well, I think it would be Michigan, but we've already bashed them enough. So I'll, I'll, I'll move on to uh, another team. I mean, Penn State hasn't looked great. I mean, they're struggling as well there. So the Big Ten as a whole, I mean, it's either, you know, we got a couple of teams that look really good that you don't, you're kind of surprised about Indiana, Northwestern, and then teams you thought would be good, Michigan and Penn State aren't playing well, but I'll jump to the SEC. I'll jump to another team that had a lot of high expectations coming into the year, and that's the Tennessee Volunteers. You know, they came in year three under Jimmy Pruitt. They finished the season off well last season. They come in 2-0 and to start the year off, beat South Carolina, beat Missouri. They're kind of rolling, feeling good. They're winning at, at the halftime against Georgia. And like, oh, my God, this Tennessee team, you know, they've, they've, they've moved on from, you know, it's th like I said, third year under Jimmy Pruitt. They're ready to take that next step as a really good program in the SEC East. And then second half hit. They fell apart against Georgia, and then they lose to Kentucky really bad, 34-7. They get smoked by Alabama. They look terrible versus Arkansas. So the struggle bus has hit for Tennessee, and you look at the rest of their schedule, Auburn, Florida, Texas A&M. You're talking about a team that most likely is only going to have three wins this season. So I think that the, it's just not a good look for Jeremy Pruitt in his third year when you were hoping to see improvements. I was going to go with LSU in the SEC, but I'm going to go to the ACC, Florida State. Look, I know Florida State upset North Carolina. Don't know how North Carolina lost that football game. Their other only win against Jacksonville State, not competitive 
at all, and they just got wiped by NC State. Mike Norvell's got to get the culture right there. Florida State, come on. I'm, I'm looking for you guys to bring it back in the ACC. Let's turn this thing around sooner than later. Let's go back to the SEC. News broke earlier this week where South Carolina has let head coach Will Muschamp go. Pretty surprising news, Aaron, amid this COVID unprecedented season. Budgets are looking different. You thought that maybe some of these coaches on the hot seats were going to get a free pass, no spring practice, abbreviated summer camp, throw them to the Wolves with an all-SEC schedule, and he gets canned through six weeks. So tough times in South Carolina. Well, I think the issue was just the defense side of football. I mean, you bring in Coach Bobo uh, from Colorado State, and you're saying, hey, listen, defensively we're fine. We just need someone to get this offense better. And, and the offense did. It, it got better from last season. It's had its ups and downs. But overall, I think Mike Bobo has done a tremendous job there at South Carolina. And then you look at the defense side of the football, and especially as of late, I mean, they've just been getting blown out on that side of the football. They let LSU run up and down the field. This past weekend, Ole Miss just had such an easy time moving the ball at will. And it just wasn't, you know, guys making plays defensively or making it tough. I mean, guys were wide open for Ole Miss. I mean, it looked – like a terrible defense that just did not know what they were doing up front. They've struggled against the run for the majority of the season. So I think the team has kind of given up on, on Will Muschamp. You kind of saw that the way they played on the defensive side of the football. So, you know, Mike Bobo is my guy. He was my OC in college. So I kind of hope that he's given an opportunity if they go out there and perform well over the next three weeks to possibly be the next head coach for South Carolina heading into 2021. But from Ray Tanner, the AD of South Carolina, he wants offense. He wants an offensive mind. He looks around the SEC. He looks around the country and says, listen, the teams that are the most successful are the teams that are scoring 40 and 50 points. So I need to bring in a guy who is an offensive mind. And one guy that really jumps out to me, it's Steve Sarkeesian at Alabama. You look at what he's done with that offense at Alabama. He's a guy with head coaching experience. Their offense is explosive. He brings a lot of excitement. So to me, there's a few guys that are going to be in it, but I would not be surprised if they go that route. Billy Napier, Jamie Chalwell from Coastal Carolina, you're hearing, who knows, maybe Hugh Freeze. I once was at a dinner with Steve Spurrier, and somebody asked him, Coach Spurrier, what's the key to winning all those football games? He said, score more points than the other team. After the break, we're going to talk about a guy who's putting up tons of points for the Florida Gators, and we'll dive into the Big Ten as well. So come on right back after the break. You're watching Campus Tour Live. Welcome back into Campus Lore Live. Aaron, I, I know you went to the University of Georgia. You're a Florida guy. You flirted with the University of Florida coming out of high school, and it was specifically for head coach Dan Mullen. And, and now I know why. What quarterback Kyle Trask has been able to do with Dan Mullen calling the plays in the swamp through six games in 2020 has never been done in the history of college football. He's got to be the front runner for the Heisman Trophy at this point. Yeah, I think right now he's a clear favorite to win the Heisman Trophy. I mean, Mac Jones at Alabama was kind of flirting with it right now. And I still think he's probably, in my mind, the number two guy. And then Justin Fields is three based on, you know, less games being played in the Big Ten. Uh, and the fact that I just don't think that conference is as dominant as the SEC right now. Trevor Lawrence obviously was the guy early on the season. He missed a couple of games, so I think he's kind of missed out on the opportunity to go win the Heisman. And Ellie Dark Horse could be Ian Book if Notre Dame continues to win. But right now, the way Kyle Trask is playing is absolutely phenomenal. He's extremely accurate. He's running the ball a little bit more, too, as well, kind of showing that athleticism within Dan Mullen's system. So I just think he's far, far ahead right now than everyone else. And I thought was a couple weeks ago, it was a two-man race between him and Mac Jones, and the winner of the SEC championship game would go on to win the Heisman as well. My thoughts on that have changed a little bit. I think if Kyle Trask plays a good game against Alabama, if it's about even stats between him and Mac Jones, Alabama finds a way to still win it. I think Kyle Trask wins the Heisman unless he goes out there and just completely craps the bed against Alabama. So I think even, like I said, if he has a good game versus the Tide, He's going to go, uh, he's going to go and, and win the Heisman, most likely, in my mind. I'll throw in Zach Wilson at BYU. I mean, is this a quarterback award? Come on now. It's not the best stats in the country. It's supposed to be the most valuable player. Let me ask this question to you. Actually, two questions. One, 
Could a non-QB win it this year? And two, if it truly is the most valuable, most outstanding player in college football, what if Trevor Lawrence goes on a tear to finish the season? They stomp Notre Dame with him playing the game, which he didn't a couple weeks ago, and they lost. If you were a Heisman voter, would that go into your decision and say, man, this guy makes a huge difference, and he is really an outstanding football player? The, the top two guys in my mind right now are Kyle Trask and Mac Jones, and they're not the most two or not the two most talented quarterbacks in all of college football this year. That goes to Trevor Lawrence, that goes to Justin Fields. I mean, those guys are going to get drafted ahead of them in the NFL draft. It's not always the most talented, it's who's having the best season, who's the most successful guy, who's winning championships, who's putting up the crazy stats. And, and right now, Kyle Trask is having the best season. He may not be the most talented guy. You, you put him against Fields and Trevor Lawrence, he's the third most talented guy there. There's no question about it, but he's having a better season and he's has more games to prove that as well. So I think it's, as long as he continues to do what he's doing right now, he's going to win. And even if Justin Fields goes out there and balls out, even if Trevor Lawrence goes out there and balls out, you know, RPOs are now the new running game because you can go throw it out there for, you know, a quick bubble screen, and a guy get four or five yards. That is a running play. So Running backs are, are important to the game. As we see in Alabama, I love their running back situation, and that's that helps their offense go. But quarterbacks in 2020 and in the future are going to continue to be more and more pivotal for team success. So I, I just don't see a running back having a chance this season. Man, no love for any defensive players. And two teams with really good defenses, I'm not saying they have Heisman caliber defensive players, are in the Big Ten right now. Indiana is ranked number nine in America. Northwestern is ranked number 19. I mean, these are two teams that aren't really sneaking in to the top 10 often and undefeated at this point in the season. And I know the Big Ten got in late, but these are two teams who are catching some people's attention. Are they for real? I mean, that's the question. Do they have a shot to make some noise in the Big Ten? Talk to me about Indiana and Northwestern. Yeah, they do. I mean, listen, they, they've come out and played well, and they've played defense, something that we've not seen across the country. I mean, you and I were talking the other day, and you know, it's just so frustrating to turn on football right now and just see the lack of defense and, and guys just not even close. All the missed tackles, all the wide open receivers, and you're just like, you know, can someone play on that side of the football? And these these two teams have, you know, and for Indiana, you know, the, the big question for me is who have they played? I mean, they played Penn State, who this year has not looked good. Michigan has looked terrible. Rutgers is an okay team, and Michigan State is an okay team. So, yes, they're undefeated, but who have they really played? So they're going to get tested this season. They're going to get tested this week with Ohio State. They're going to get tested with Wisconsin. So I think both these teams, yes, have started well, but they haven't really got into the meat of some of the elite teams with inside the Big Ten. So I really want to wait and see uh, until some of they play until they play some of these big boys who are also having good seasons at the moment. Yeah, and hopefully they can remain with a consistent schedule as we saw last weekend, Aaron, 13 or 15 games across the nation were postponed or canceled due to COVID-19 protocol. Does that give you any worry moving forward? Are you worried that this situation could spiral out of control or do you think that these athletic departments and these teams – have a good vision of how to get this season finished in 2020. Well, I think they're they're being very flexible. I think there's been a lot of talks about, okay, listen, we may have to push around some weekends when it comes to championship games. I know the SEC has already been in talks about, you know, do we push the championship game to the 26th and said December 19th? If we do keep it the 19th, do we also add in some more games, say Texas A&M, Ole Miss, some of these teams that have missed out, do they also play on that championship weekend as well? So I think for right now, things are okay. Uh, like I said, the big word is going to be flexibility. And also, is there going to be flexibility in moving around the dates of the college football playoffs? So I think there's a bunch of great people, very smart people working through this right now. But if we have more and more weekends like we had this past weekend, I do think we're hoping it was a one-time thing. I'm hoping it's something that was affected by Halloween and kids being a little bit stupid and going out and going to parties and that kind of thing. And that's you know kind of the two weeks is when you start to see some of the problems. So Hopefully we put this in the past. Hopefully these kids can focus in and just get ready to go for the, the this, this final stretch of games as we get ready for the playoffs. But like I said, I, I do feel decent about it. I feel pretty good. I'm, I'm optimistic. But if we do have another weekend like this, it's going to be um, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to make it happen. Yeah, no question. To this point, through 11 weeks, 87 percent of all college football games have been played. So it's good to remain optimistic and positive. Hopefully everybody remains safe. 
Next, we're going to be joined by our guest this week. It's Justice Hill, former Oklahoma State Cowboy, current running back with the Baltimore Ravens. We're going to talk with him about Bedlam, get his thoughts on Chuba Hubbard and everything going on in the Big 12. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right, time to welcome in our guest on this week's episode of Campus Lore Live. We are thrilled to be joined by Justice Hill. Justice is a running back for the NFL's Baltimore Ravens and a former Oklahoma State Cowboy. Obviously a huge rivalry this weekend with Bedlam as the Cowboys head to Norman to take on Oklahoma. Justice, do you think that there is a pathway for Oklahoma State to fight their way back into that top four discussion? Uh, I definitely would hope so. I mean, all they can do right now is go out and play every single game and win every single game. I mean, that's all they can really can control right now. And the rest is really kind of up to the committee. So when you look at the, the Big 12, I mean, the big thing the past couple of years is just the lack of defense. You got a bunch of offenses that just throw up a ton of stupid numbers and points, and it's just a one-sided league. And you look at Oklahoma State, and then they're kind of bucking the trend a little bit and saying, hey, we're going to play a good defense. How does that help them uh, and their chances of being successful within the Big 12? Yeah, I think for sure Oklahoma State, for the last few years, defense really has been a, a thing that – been trying to progress uh, every single year, and they've been getting really good at it. And uh, right now, they just got a lot of experience from uh, on the D-line to the linebackers to uh, the secondary. Everybody's been just playing at a high level, and I feel like uh, that identity uh, right now is like the defense is kind of leading the team. Yeah, a lot of they've got a dynamic running back in Chuba Hubbard. Oh, yeah, that's my dog from the first day he stepped on campus. Uh, uh, he came in. Uh, it, that first year, he had the red shirt. He, he used that year to develop his body. Uh, just become more of a student of the game, and when he ever, whenever he got the opportunity to go out there, he he just did what he did in high school. You know, just go out there, run hard. He runs physical. Uh, he can pull away from people. He make people miss, break tackles. He pretty much does everything you want in a in a running back. Talk to us about this rivalry game. It seems like you never know what to expect year in and year out. Tons of passion from the fan base. There's two great personalities at head coach with Lincoln Riley and Mike Gundy. What are your favorite memories? from this great in-state rivalry? First off, we just want to get that respect from first the conference and then just around the nation because we can we can play these big games and we can uh, beat teams that we need to beat. And so I know they, they're coming in, they dialed in, they had a bye week and they've been locked in, focused. And they're going to go out there and show the world that they, they can play at a level that that everybody else can play in the, in, in the country. So it's going to be exciting. Drew mentioned the, the personalities of the coaches and, and Mike Gundy has one heck of a personality and – one heck of a haircut. Uh, talk about him as a head coach, and you know, what's he like in the locker room? What's he like on game day? Oh yeah, I mean, it seemed like he's been he'd been trimming it. Uh, the last couple times I seen, the the mullet's kind of looking shorter, but our whole team is built on culture and and chemistry, and he does everything he can to kind of build that for us. Even when things get tough and and, th- and things look bad, you know, we still kind of come come together at the end of the day. You mentioned you grew up an Oklahoma State fan since you were five years old. Obviously, very cool to realize your dream of playing for the Cowboys and, and being such a dominant player. What's that dynamic like in the state? I mean, is it a 50-50 split? Obviously, Oklahoma has won national championships in the past. They've been in the college football playoff. Every Bellum party I went to, I probably was the only OSU fan. So I'll say it's probably like 90-10, 80-20 is, is, is really OU heavy in, in the state of Oklahoma. So, uh, you know, just having that underdog. Little brother, like not little brother, but underdog mentality, you know, is, is good to have too sometimes. So, Justice, before we let you go, man, we need to know what's going to happen this weekend. Number 14, Oklahoma State, heading to Norman to take on number 18 ranked Oklahoma. Give us your game prediction and who's going to win. Oh, we, we definitely will come out with the win, man. They they just came off uh, a bye week. We were coming off, man, we just motivated. We had the loss against Texas. I just feel like they're going to go out there and, and give everything they got. And so, Definitely feel like we get a good win. Gonna be uh, some good defense play and and some good offense play. So uh, I don't, I don't want to give a score prediction. I'm just saying we're gonna come out with a dub, though. All right, I like it. That'd be huge for Oklahoma State. Talking about playing their way back into that college football playoff picture. Justice, thanks so much for your time, man. Good luck the rest of the season with the Baltimore Ravens. And when we come back, Aaron and I are gonna dive in to the rest of the action. We are back, Campus Lore Live. Huge thanks to Justice Hill for joining us this week. Aaron, it was a lot of fun to learn more about Bedlam, that rivalry, how things work at Oklahoma State. 
And man, they've got some great running backs there in Stillwater. It's a it's a great program and a fun program to follow. Soon enough, we're going to tell you what we think about that matchup coming up. But what about this weekend? What are some games to keep your eye on, maybe outside some of those top 25 matchups? Aaron, I'll throw it to you first. What game are you looking forward to seeing this weekend? Well, I, I really want to see Cincinnati at UCF. I mean, this is a UCF team that's still 5-2, and two, playing great football at home. Uh, and, and you know how much I love Cincinnati. I think this team deserves a chance to, to have the ability to possibly get into the playoffs. But this is a big obstacle for them. They got a big bullseye on their back. UCF would love to take them down. Dylan Gabriel is a tremendous quarterback. So this is going to be a test for Cincinnati. I'm going to keep my eye on it. In the top 10, Aaron, we have a matchup in the Big Ten. Number nine, Indiana, heading to Columbus to take on number three, Ohio State. Look, I told you last week I'm done fading Indiana. Now I have to let you know if I'm man enough to say they could beat Ohio State. I'm not so sure. Ohio State's nearly a three-touchdown favorite. This is where Indiana quickly finds out, Aaron, are they for real? Yeah, this is our opportunity. I mean, we talked early in the show about great season so far, 4-0, but who have they really played that looks good this year? Michigan looks great on paper. The name, the brand, Penn State looks great on paper. The brand... But those teams aren't very good in the Big Ten this season. We've seen them play not great. Not, not taking anything away from Indiana. What they've done this season has been absolutely tremendous. But I just think Ohio State is going to be too much for them to handle. Justin Fields right now is playing on a different level. His accuracy, the touchdowns, taking care of the football, his ability to run, the studs they have on the outside. I just think overall Ohio State is one of those elite teams, a team that's going to be in the playoffs, a team that's going to, to, going to contend for a national championship. So it's going to be too much for Indiana. Yeah, I agree with you. Tough to hang for 60 minutes with a team with that much firepower in Ohio State. Hopefully Indiana can keep it close, but I got to roll with the Buckeyes here this weekend. Staying in the Big Ten, number 10 ranked Wisconsin, hitting the road, heading to Evanston to take on number 19 ranked Northwestern. I'm not so sure about Northwestern yet. Wisconsin needs to keep building and stacking wins. Who do you like in this game? I like Wisconsin. I mean, we talked about uh, earlier the fact that they missed games because of COVID, and, and we weren't really sure what they're going to look like versus Michigan. And they came out there and showed us that, hey, we can still run the football. I think you're going to see a really good game for this offense for Wisconsin. Uh, Northwestern, they're going to have to continue to step up and play great defense, but I like Wisconsin in this football game. This is going to be a close game. That gritty Pat Fitzgerald-led defense for Northwestern playing at home should keep this one close. This might be the game of the weekend. I like Wisconsin to sneak out a victory as well. And to wrap things up, we had Justice Hill on to talk about Bedlam, number 14, Oklahoma State, heading to Norman to take on number 18 ranked Oklahoma. Who's going to win this big time rivalry game, Aaron? I think Oklahoma State. I mean, listen, Oklahoma State should have, could have, would have, but they should have beat Texas. I mean, they literally gifted that game to Texas with all the turnovers. They dominated on both sides of the football. Just silly mistakes really cost them a chance to to, to be in the playoffs, in my opinion, I think they were good enough to, to run the table the rest of the way. I think they're a better team than Oklahoma this year. Uh, I just think for, for Spencer Rattler in Oklahoma, this is going to be one of the best defenses he faces this entire season. I don't know if he's ready to go out there and dominate a football game against this defense. So I like Oklahoma State to cause a couple turnovers. Uh, and as long as they can take control of the football offensively and not turn it over, I think they win this football game pretty comfortably. Yeah, you know, I got to go against our guests, Spencer Rattler and Lincoln Riley, more importantly, I think will find a way to get around that stingy Oklahoma State defense. It will surely be a fantastic game in the Big 12. It's Bedlam. We've come to know it is always going to deliver. Well, thank you for watching this episode of Campus Lore Live. Thanks to our guests this week, Justice Hill. For Aaron Murray, I'm Drew Butler. We'll see you right back here next week on Campus Lore Live.